Hey guys, Russ Mero here. If you've seen my recent community posts, you might know that I'm currently feeling a lot of hype for modern Japanese Dual Masters. And just this weekend, we got the very first star deck for the fourth generation of the game, Jashin from Abyss, featuring the brand new protagonist Win Kirifuda and his darkness civilization, Abyss Royal Deck. So I thought I'd test it out on camera while also making a tutorial for those less familiar with the game. Cause even if you're someone who's played the game before, back when it was out in English, there are a lot of new mechanics to talk about. And for our practice opponents, I've chosen the final starter deck of the previous third generation, Joe's Starmex Evolution. This star deck is pretty recent as well, it came out in April this year. So preparing for the game is really simple, you just need one deck of 40 cards each with a maximum number of 4 copies per card. Card, shuffle both decks and then deploy the top 5 cards of each deck as 5 shields. So yes, this is essentially the same 5 life concepts as Digimon and the One Piece card game. Now in real life, there's no need, but because I think it might be a bit difficult to differentiate between the shields and the deck on TTS, I'm just gonna put these shield markers on the shields to make them easier to see. And then of course, both sides will draw 5 cards for their starting hands. Now let us see who goes first. Looks like the previous protagonist, Joe, will get the first move. Now in Japan, before starting a game of Duel Masters, the call is Duoma Starts. And Duoma just being like the Japanese short form for Duel Masters. So here we go. Shields deployed, creatures on standby, Duoma Starts. So the first thing you do at the start of your turn is untap all of your cards, but of course, on the very first turn, you will have none. Next, draw a card, but the player going first does it. Third, you are allowed to place one card from your hand upside down in your mana zone. This is also called a mana charge and this mana is what you will use to pay the cost of your cards. During the main phase, you basically tap your mana to play your cards. So with one green or nature mana, Joe will play the Tamashid Helicopter's Memory. When this Tamashid is put, look at the top 4 cards of your deck. You may show one evolution creature from among them to your opponents and edit your hand. Return the rest to deck bottom in any order. One. 2, 3, and 4. So they have two targets over here. And they're going to choose the evolution creature, Aurelia Petrostar. So Tamashids are a new card type that are kind of like objects or artifacts. So you play them, activate their effects, but after that, instead of going to the graveyard, they remain on your field as objects. And in the lore, how these cards came to be is because the villains actually sealed some of the protagonist's monsters in the form of objects. So what you're actually looking at now is the soul of one of Joe's creatures, Helicopter, sealed within a sketchbook drawing. And the reason why Joe's creatures are sealed in this form is because they were originally his drawings that were only brought to life as creatures with the help of his partner, Deki. Next is the battle phase, but Joe doesn't have any creatures to attack with, so turn in. Wind will charge, 1 darkness mana, but since he has no 1 cost cards in his hand, he has no choice but to end his turn. So at the start of Joe's turn, untap all cards, draw, he charges 1 light mana in the form of Smapon's memory, and tapping 2, Helicopter's memory will evolve into Illyria Petro Star. Now some of you guys might be wondering what just happened, allow me to explain. The Tamashids from the Joe era all have the Shinka Rise keyword effects, or also known as Evolution Rise, allowing you to evolve them as if they are creatures. And Olyria over here is a star evolution creature which can evolve on top of any of your wreck stars or light civilization creatures. Helicopter's memory has two races, Jokers and wreck stars. Since it's a wreck stars, it can evolve into Olyria. And what makes star evolution different from the regular evolution you might remember from the old days? When a star evolution creature would leave the field, you can just remove the top card instead. So if Olyria over here would be destroyed or bounced, anything like that, you can simply remove just the top card and the Tamashid would remain. Or the creature below would remain. And now, it's time to enter the battle phase. Now just like Digimon and One Piece, creatures in Duel Masters cannot attack the turn they are summoned because they will suffer from Summoning Sickness. However, Evolution creatures are not affected by Summoning Sickness, so technically, Olyria could attack right away, but it is not going to. Because in order to win, you need to break all 5 of your opponent's shields and then inflict them with a direct attack. However, whenever you break a shield, that shield is added to your opponent's hand, giving them more resources and strategic options and 
if it happens to have the shield trigger effect, it can be played instantly for free. So generally speaking, if you are not playing an aggro deck, you need to be quite careful about the timing in which you break your opponent's shields. Joe ends his turn. Draw, wind charges, and with two darkness mana, he summons Suicide Doll Gen. When this creature is put, you may destroy this creature, and if you do, randomly discard one card from your opponent's hand. Win chooses to do so, and this is really gonna hurt since Cho only has three cards in his hand. So let's leave this to RNG, putting all the cards in his hand together, flipping them around, shuffle, and the randomly discarded card is another copy of Helicopter's Memory. And with that, turn in, untap, draw. So you see, because you need to sacrifice one card from your hand every turn if you want to build up mana, your hand size is an extremely important resource and hand death effects like Jenny's can be really powerful. Joe is gonna charge Jasmine's rune and for 3 mana, he will play another Tamashid, Kanan's Memory. When this Tamashid is put, reveal the top 3 cards of your deck, add 1 evolution creature and 1 Tamashid from among them to your hand, return the rest to deck bottom in any order. 1, 2, and 3, very nice! This way, they can recoup their hand size. They add one more copy of Kanan's Memory and the Star Max Evolution creature, Momo King Max, your signature card to the hand. Turn in, untap, and draw. Charge, and 4 3. We will play the Abyss Royal, Fork Fork. When this creature is put, you may mill the top three cards of your deck, and if you do, you can recycle one Abyss from your grave. 1, 2, and three! It looks like Win is matching Joe move for move because one of those cards milled is his ace card, the ruler of the abyss, just shit. And since he is an abyss by being of the abyss royal race, he is added to the hand. For can attack because of summoning sickness, turn in, untap, and draw. Charging Karnan's memory for four. The Karnan's memory on the field will evolve into Chotokyu. Gregory Star. Not only is he a double breaker, which means he breaks two shields with his attack. When this creature is put, place the top card of your deck in your mana. No! That was rather unfortunate. Now Joe is gonna make a bit of a gamble here and attack with Gregory Star. He is a double breaker, so he can break two of wind shields, and in Duel Masters, the attacking player is allowed to choose which shields to break. So uh, let's say he just chooses the two at the edges and the shields when broken are added to their owner's hand. Oh, but there is a shield trigger among them! Here it comes, Super Demon Hand. On shield trigger, you may instantly cast this spell for free. Destroy one opposing creature. After that, mill cards from the top of your deck equal to that creature's cost. Now, while Win would love to choose Gregory Star with this effect, Petro Star actually has a defensive ability. Your opponents cannot choose your cost 3 or higher evolution creatures with their effects and Gregory Star is cost 4. So the Super Demon Hand has no choice but to kill Petro Star. Since it's a star evolution creature, only the top is removed, the bottom remains. And since Petro Star is cost 2, milling 2 cards from the top of their deck. Turn in, untap, draw, charging 1. For 4 darkness mana, the time has come. Win will summon his partner to the field, the ruler of the abyss, Jashi. However, nothing really happens when he hits the field, and even if he didn't have Summoning Sickness, he wouldn't be able to attack. And the reason is because, Jashin is a new type of card called a Tamashid Creature. Which means, that while he's on the field, he's treated as either a Tamashid or a creature, depending on a specific condition. In Jashin's case, he will only become a creature if you have at least 4 Darkness Creatures or Tamashids on your field. Since there are only two, he is currently only an object, a Tamashi. But on the plus side, this also means that he's currently immune to any effects that target creatures. Turn in, untap, and draw. With no charge, Joe will pay three to evolve Helicopter's memory into Krista, Voyager Star. A blocker that reduces the cost of your evolution creatures and Tamashids by one. And with that battle, Gregory Star will go for a double break once more, this time aiming for wins, top two shields. So they are added to the hand, but no shield triggers. Turn in, but at the start of Win's turn, Jashin begins to act. At the start of your turn, you may mill the top card of your deck. After that, you may play a cost three or less creature from your grave. So, first, milling the top card of your deck. They will bring forth the Abyss Royal, Bel Galeo, from the grave. 
When this creature is put, mill the top two cards of your deck. And with that, untap and draw. Win is in a pinch. But charging one, they will now pay five in order to activate the signature effects of the Abyss Royals, Abyss Rush. Creatures with Abyss Rush can be summoned from the grave, and if you do, they can attack the opposing player the turn they are summoned. However, they are sent to the bottom of the deck at the end of the turn. But with five cost, the cup Gallop from the grave is summoned to the field with Abyss Rush. Not only that, now that there are four Darkness creatures on Wind's field, Jashin will transform from a Tamashid into a creature and can attack. Battle with Abyss Rush, Cup Gallop attacks aiming for Joe's shield. Take note that Abyss Rush doesn't allow you to attack opposing creatures. You must go for the opposing player or their shields. And when this creature attacks, Civil counts 3. If you control at least a total of 3 Darkness creatures or Tamashids, destroy one opposing creature. The target chosen is the blocker, Krista, Voyager Star. But again, with Star Evolution, only the top is removed, the Tamashid remains. Cup Gallop is a double breaker, so it goes for Joe's upper 2 shields. It's time to break! One, two. And there are no shield triggers. Jashin is a double breaker, but since Bell was summoned this turn, it has summoning sickness and cannot attack, so Win doesn't have lethal. So instead, you'll just use Jashin to attack Gregory Star. And with Star Evolution again, only the top is removed. Turn in. At the end of the turn, because Cup Gallop was summoned with Abyss Rush, it is returned to deck bottom. And what is especially disgusting about this is because since Win now has less than 4 Darkness creatures or Tamashids on his field, Jashin reverts from a creature back into a Tamashid so he cannot be attacked and cannot be affected by creature targeting effects. Untap and draw. First, Joe will charge Jasmine's room. And 4-3, evolve Kanan's memory into Krista, Voyager Star. With Voyager Star's continuous effect, all of Joe's evolution creatures cost one less to summon. So, paying another 3, they can now evolve Helicopter's memory into another copy of Chotoku, Gregory Star. Again, when this creature is put, gain 1 mana. And since evolution creatures can attack the turn they are summoned, Joe has lethal. Chotoku attacks. And with that, Win's final shield will be broken. And it is... Wait a minute, if I am not wrong, yes it is, it's a shield trigger. Hammer Dharma. On shield trigger, you may instantly summon this creature for free. When this creature is put, you may mill the top three cards of your deck. After that, destroy one opposing creature with a cost less than the number of cards you have in your grave. One, two, and three. Win currently has 10 cards in your grave. So of course, the cost 3 Voyager Star can be smashed and Win has just secured himself another turn on top of an additional attacker. Turn over. At the start of the turn, Jashin's effect activates once more to revive a second Fork Fork from the grave. And when put, another 3 cards are sent to the grave and the Abyss Royal Knife of Ibis recycled. Untap, draw. With one charge, first for 4 mana, Another hammer Danma drops onto the field, and once again, milling three cards from the top of their deck for good measure, they trash, I mean crush, Gregory Star as well. And with their remaining two mana, another Bell Galil. When put, they mill another two cards from the top of their deck. They literally only have six cards left. But this is what the Abyss Royal deck is all about. First, Jashin attacks with its double breaker, going for Joe's top two shields. Here we go! Double break! No! Well, I guess they got a shield trigger. Smartphone's memory. On shield trigger, this Tamashid can be instantly used for no cost. And when this Tamashid is put, tap all of your opponent's creatures. This effect should sound quite familiar if you've played Duel Masters back in the day. This is essentially Holy Spark. Tap, 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 and tap, tap. Which means, Win is no longer able to attack this turn. Turn over. Untap. Draw with one charge. First, with two mana, including light. Kanan's memory evolves into Olyria, Petro Star, and then with the remaining one, two, three, four, five, six. Joe will summon his ace, the blazing incarnation of his very soul, Momo King Max. Momo King Max is a Star Max evolution creature, which means it can enter the field without an evolution base. 
But how does that make sense? Well, the lore here is that Starmax evolution occurs when the player themselves steps onto the field and evolves into a creature. So that's why no base is needed. And because of that, you can only have one Starmax evolution creature on your field at a time. And when you would lose the game, you can destroy this creature or discard another Momo King Max from your hand to prevent defeat. But anyway, since it's an evolution creature, it doesn't suffer from summoning sickness and it can immediately attack. When Momo King Max attacks, draw one card. After that, you may play one cost six or less Tamashid from your hand. So with one draw, Wow, I guess he's just gonna do it. Joe plays another copy of Smapon's memory for free. Once again, when this Tamashid is put, tap all of your opponent's creatures. Not there are any left. And with that, Win has no blockers on the field and no shields remaining. It's a direct attack and the match is over. The winner is Joe's Starmax Evolution. Now just out of curiosity, why don't we take a look at his final shield? Oh, it was nothing. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this look at some of the new mechanics in Modern Duel Masters and I'll see you guys in the next DM video.